now it's time for the closing lecture. Um, it's a keynote speaker, Karl Zbosi, who was also present in the 2017 version of this conference. It's a keynote speaker that time as well. And who also gave a lecture in uh, the workshop of quantum logic on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. So we have really squeezed uh, Carl this week with several lectures and now closing with his keynote lecture. I, I apologize. I thought we were going to stop from there. No, no. I didn't know it's there. Uh, there is a program. There was a change in the program. So, but That's no fine. worries. No worries. So, Carl, let me open the, the talk for you. Yeah. Please, please hold the microphone. This. No, thank you. Is uh, it a PDF? Yes, yes. Okay. PDF and I, I think it works. So, thank you for your attention. And, uh, well, I, this makes a continuation of my political run. Um, but, but I think it, there are many undergoes or also in science. And let me just mention some of them, you know? I, I think uh, they are very often not mentioned that there are some soft, but, but you, you, I, I think since we are all here, since this is an interdisciplinary workshop, it's interesting also to mention some of the, the problems um, which sometimes hinder progress uh, in the hard, in the, in the exact, in the so-called exact sciences. Um, so I'm just mentioning some soft obstacles associated with, with the quantum process. And um, uh, one, and one of the examples you, are, you, you just experienced now, that's the question, who listens to whom? You know? And who listens to whom in the attention economy constitutes the banking order? So, um, so if, if, if you are going to uh, get a, a, and this is also compound interest. This is by, there's a famous paper in, in, in uh, social sciences in sociology, uh, the Matthew effect in science. Yeah. And there's a recent paper on who, who gets um, uh, uh, cited and who gets financed or not, uh, by saying that if you are already on the winning side, uh, chances are high that you are winning just uh, because people are listening. And if you are on the losing side, they will not, they will not listen. You know, so this is a, this, uh, this kind, I mean, the, the standard formula is that if you're just good enough, uh, uh, you will be hurt uh, nevertheless. This is true, this is the good thing in science, I believe. But uh, there are also some, some things, you know, there, there are certain breaches. Klaus uh, of is evangelic, evangelicists, quantum evangelics, who, um, who, who, uh, uh, just uh, um, 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 invited with many conferences and often do this, uh, the same thing, but this is not helping science to the degree I believe that uh, that uh, the that resources are 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 invested. It's kind of a the economists call that um, opportunity cost. You know, you have only so much attention and you you, you divert it to several things. And, and, and the best thing is to, to ask yourself who listens to you and, and who are you listening to? And, and then we will get a, a notion of hierarchy. And this hierarchy is sometimes useful but sometimes not. This is, this is my point. The second point is um, basically what the, what the Austrian um, uh, experimentalists uh, in coffee houses told me um, or forced me to accept this, that you have to, re to, to reconstruct the physical meaning from detector clicks. I mean, there are detector clicks only, you know? Sometimes a detector clicks and oh, it doesn't click, and all, you have to, and, and all that, that is left to you is to uh, interpret um, what these detector clicks are. Now then, there exists a, a very interesting debate which you can listen to in nature uh, and I felt that uh, uh, in front of myself, I was shocked when I, when I heard that actually uh, 
Professor Zellinger um, um, asked uh, Professor Kimball to do the talk, and previously there was this, uh, this idea that uh, uh, Zellinger was one of the first uh, to do uh, quantum teleportation uh, in Kimball's Dublin said we are doing it a posteriori. Your clicks is a posteriori quantum so teleportation. Now, I, I believe that if somebody says a posteriori, it, it, kills, it kills the thing. Because you can a posteriori, you, you can have stronger than quantum correlations. Camilo has a paper on that. So, uh, and it's quite clear, you just sort out uh, the things you like to sort out. Um, and there's an exchange about detector clicks in nature, basically, among these two. Very interesting. So, so all the things that people are talking about are about detector clicks only. You know, and also the double slits are detect basically accumulated detector clicks. Um, what they also don't tell you sometimes is that they, they measure some term in the morning, they measure a complementary term in the evening, uh, the third term uh, next morning, and the fourth term in, on, on the following uh, evening. So they are not doing this on one party, let's say they also want to move inside in a whole inequality. Uh, so this is basically sampling. Then there's a question about who accept counterfactuals. Now counterfactuals, Professor uh, Specker wrote um, um, a very interesting paper which has been translated uh, recently on, um, on, 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 on the issue of counterfactuals. The, the fun, I mean, the interesting thing is that Coach and Specker started out a program developing quantum logic along the lines that you should have only operations in one co-measurable properties only. But then they went on, I mean, uh, if, you, if, you, if you stop with that, then you are dead already after one context, because uh, that's all you can do. Yeah? But, um, but uh, of course, they didn't stop after one context. They had 117 contexts in their bigger picture, and, uh, and uh, 7 plus 7 plus 2 uh, in, the, in the one that nobody realizes, but it's already non classic in uh, a logic that has no, uh, no separating set of two various states, that's the gamma, gamma 3. Um, but, and, and I asked Professor Specker, uh, well, you start out uh, courageously, you say, we are only, you know, uh, doing operations like AND and NOT, and, and all among mutual commuting operators. This is not what for Neumann and Gilbert said. So they are differentiating themselves from the pain. But uh, then you are using all these uh, contexts, you know, these interlinked contexts to, uh, to argue something. And uh, this, that, there was one answer I never got from Cortes of uh, So I think that's a contradiction. So, but it, it's, very, it's very characteristic of, of the situation that uh, people are discussing counterfactuals in, in manners which probably they, they are not too many people are aware of. And Specker has, as I said, this very nice article about it. It's a programmatic article in which he announces the coach of Specker theorem basically more than 10 years before he actually proves it. But the coach of Specker theorem really is, as Lessinger and, uh, and other people said, it's already contained in the recent paper. Anyway, so uh, there's a very nice paper with a very profound uh, title by Paris, Asher Paris, Unperformed Experiments with No Result. This is one of my favorite quotations and papers. And I asked Clifton, Rob Clifton, unfortunately, to die, but uh, uh, I asked him in uh, 19, 1995 at the IQSA meeting in Prague. Um, uh, if he has any idea how he would how he would go go along measuring something that relates to the Kurtzsch Specker theorem, and he said, well, the Kurtzsch Specker theorem is a, a theorem which is proved by contradictio et absurdum method, and how can you measure a contradiction? You know? This relates a little bit to the Hilbert paper, uh, uh, because of ähnliche Welt says, well, there are some people now saying that they can have that they can have it both ways. 
but I was also uh, unable so far to locate who he got that in mind. And of course, uh, often quoted um, the mind project, the so-called what, what changed called the mind projection factors. This has been described already in 1912 by Freud saying, if you have a client, and our client is nature, just don't project too much onto it, you know, on, onto this guy, because uh, because um, you yeah uh, you will you will get astray. You will not uh, realize what the client is actually meaning, and this I think applies also to uh, uh, to uh, to quantum mechanics and to the issues raised there. And, and the main change, as many of you know, got really mad about this. You know. Uh, he had this omelet paper that, that was quoted already a uh, long time ago. So now, now I'm doing, uh, now that I have said that it's sinful to, uh, to talk about um, uh, many contexts which cannot be simultaneously measured, I'm going to do just that, you know? Because if I'm not going to do that, I would be finished already. You know, because I would be uh, sitting here explaining a classical probability theory of, uh, of which I don't have, of which I, I'm not an expert. I can, I can uh, tell you uh, uh, that uh, itself as a, as, a, as a useful tool um, uh, for the Gleason's theorem to be motivated or for, for a start. Basically, the Gleason's theorem says that if you start out with um, uh, the Dirac von Neumann formalism of Hilbert space, he was stimulated uh, because McKay, McKay told, talked about him with that. He's, uh, before that, I think, had, had no idea if, if he writes that explicitly. McKay gave me that, you know? And now I'm, I'm, I'm uh, giving you this theorem. Um, so, um, so he says, um, I have the following problem. Those things which can be co-measured behave classically, and uh, there is Kolmogorov in the axiomatics as a probability. And if you paste them together in a uh, vector space-like con context, then I give you that. Then I can prove that uh, out comes the board, the board inequalities, if and only if. So there must necessary and sufficient. Um, so, so I can do uh, a tradition, let's say, but I, I'm also talking about counterfactuals. And, but I, again, I got my doubts recently. And, and I can tell you why I got my doubts recently. Now, <clears throat> um, there exists, you, usually the coach becker theorem is proven by saying that um, there doesn't exist um, a, a two-valued measure, then that is you have uh, the quantum observables and uh, a specific set of quantum observables, mostly finite, and you, you, uh, you interpret the quantum observables as if it was a classical observable structure. And there exist non-commuting classical observable structures, as I have thought before, and nobody really realizes, but at some point probably somebody will become interested. They exist uh, just, just by the naming, name dropping, Wright's generalized good model. It's an ingenious model to model complementarity, but not value indefiniteness, not what, what is now called contextuality. So the good or bad rules, whatever you like, there exists complementarity without value indefiniteness. Without the, and the criterion is given in the Cauchy Specker paper, which nobody reads anyway. So the Cauchy Specker paper, the theorem zero of the Cauchy Specker theorem says is you can have these uh, uh, very different structures which, are, which can be uh, complementary, can contain many interlinked contexts. And the simplest one is, is, is the one I, I gave you. This is this, is this you know. In 3D, of course, in 2D, this, this is not that possible. It's just a, a tripod uh, of orthogonal, orthogonal uh, normalized vectors just rotated along a common leg. The common leg is this one here. Yeah. So this is a glitch diagram characterizing um, uh, in, a, in a smooth line, characterizing a, a context or a, or a 
can identify it with a maximal operator or with an autonomic basis. Um, so, it, so this is theorem zero of Kochen Becker. Theorem zero states that as long as the associated logic has a non-separate uh, has a separating set of states, you can have JCP models. But these JCP models will be not contextual, but as you know, there's a confusion about this, uh, but it will be complementary. The observers will be complementary. Um, so, uh, so, so usually one proves those things by saying, well, uh, there doesn't exist any classical interpretation. So it's totally futile to, to think of this in classical terms. This is the full rough of the coaches Becker theorem. But what coaches Becker did before that was, in order to prove that, they gave uh, very interesting, funny uh, uh, diagrams, which which they invented before. In other papers, uh, people uh, even less read than the coaches Becker paper. Uh, which has the property that if you associate, you prepare a state to be in one, uh, let's say, along a certain vector, then uh, you, I can I give you some some logic, some finite sets according to Coach and Specker, where uh, where an end point, an end terminal, must if you, if you interpret this classically, it must not occur. So if I prepare you with this, this is a typical uh, structure. I, I think anybody following my lectures uh, this year. So this is the what Specker called the Kiefer, the bug. You know, Specker called this the bug. Uh, so if this is this is true, this can't be true. Why can't this be true? Very simple. Because if this is true, this must be false, this must be false, this must be false, this must be false. Hence, by admissibility rules uh, of quantum coloring, these are both uh, true. Uh, it's like you throw in into a, into a three board uh, interferometer one particle and you get out two. That's impossible. Uh, so, so this is disallowed. So the only way which is, which is allowed, uh, the only measure, there still exists a lot, there's like 13 uh, two-valued measures on that. So the only way uh, to, to cope with that is to assume that this is false. And this is typically true implies false logic. Yeah, uh, Coach Specker used to then construct two implies true, and then they iterated that just along uh, some path and found uh, that they, according to this logic, if I assume that these things which they have uh, found the Facebook uh, or representation, now with the uh, 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 Lovatsch and uh, Schriefer and Gretchen paper, I would say, and the Tita body, uh, and this, uh, this, uh, this uh, then can't be true because it's, a, it's an orthogonal, uh, it's an autonomous system where this classic measure should be one on every leg. You know, this is this would be only allowed by Adam Capello's uh, 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 contextuality measures, but not in, 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 the, in the usual standard measure type thing. Okay, so uh, so I'm just considering given Alice is true, what is the recyclers fault? And um, there exist now, and I will show you uh, immediately explicit examples, the following situation. There can be uh, true implies true situations. Um, and we have given minimal ones in a recent paper, Cabello and uh, Jose. Uh, um, Latino, um, uh, in Fusor FA, where we gave, in, 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 for small dimensions, we gave all minimal ones. Then it can be false, true implies false, so it is, uh, prepares uh, um, uh, a, a certain state, such that Bob must, if you interpret this quantum cloud classically, must, uh, must not uh, uh, observe this. And then it can be indeterminate, or whatever, you know. The, I will I will come back to that shortly. Now, but by, by the way, this is already something 
uh, Hippies has suggested to use as a proof of quantumness because if you have Alice prepared this and, and Bob uh, measuring uh, quant uh, on a system and Bob um, uh, measuring not an outcome which according to the classical predictions uh, must occur then you say this must be a true, true quantum system and this is, this is much faster in a sense than the uh, than uh, delta inequalities you know, you prepare something, you measure another one it's just a filter uh, and it is not always the case for, for certain clouds but I can give you clouds where, where optimized clouds where this is always the case I will show you the same thing yeah? So, so if you prepare something and you, and you measure another thing, I will immediately say this is, this is not classical. This has been discovered long time ago by Bain, Fante, Stairs, and so on and so on. People don't realize, I think, that what's, what's going on here because they, they, it's very difficult to, to wade through the, the niches where it figure out what, uh, what, the, what the quantum clouds are. But once uh, it's done, it's quite uh, quite clear. So this is a configuration like this. This is a, a faithful orthogonal representation of, of such a configuration, just one among many. Yeah, and um, and, and this has five two-valued states. I have shown you this. Yeah, uh, and 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 th this is a typical example of true implies whatever. So this this doesn't do the job if you want to prove quantumness. Now this is, uh, this is a funny logic we discovered if by proving an extended version of the Cauchy Speckler theorem, a faithful orthogonal representation again is general of mathematical physics where we give all the vectors. And um, this logic has only one two-valued state such that um, uh, for for uh, for Alice preparing um, uh, this this state and without a loss of generality we can assume it's one zero zero and uh, then on Bob's side um, which is just uh, a 50 50 thing uh, quantum mechanically interpreted classically Bob's side must be true so in half of the cases. Um, uh, you see uh, some, some discrepancies between classical predictions and your quantum measurements on these vectors. But, but mind you, you know, all you are measuring here, you're, you're not measuring this, this whole thing, you know. You're just measuring, you're preparing Alice and measuring Paul. All else is in your mind only. Idealistic. Idealistic. Here, this is just a different that I leave outside the context, two contexts and eight others. This is just a, just a, a the previous was a tips, true implies false. Now here this is a tits. Only one measure, Alice is true. Here Bob is false on the same on the same vector. So so if you measure something and, and if you prepare something to be in a definite state and you measure it in a in a, in a direction that, that is an angle p over 4 apart you have your choices interpreted classically I can give you two quantum clouds which, which do the opposite the one says it has to be true, the other says it has to be false and this is how, the way how in a certain sense Pitovsky saw this principle of indeterminism and this is not only true for a uh, distance p over uh, 4 path, but one can prove that um, algorithmically one can produce finite set of such uh, quantum paths which would do it for all angles. For all angles except collinear orbital. So this is, this is how I started uh, thinking about this. This is the full logic. With the full logic, you know, the, the typical argument of theorists would say, and we have done this, uh, produced a, a, a PIA, would say, well, these kind of logics 
So this is this is just contained in our channel of complementary uh, physics and also in the archive. So it's not it's, it's just a twisted version uh, uh, because I I used uh, I twisted it for my purposes. Now uh, uh, this isn't so bad, by the way. It's 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 very connected. Uh, it can be represented in three D Hilbert space and you keep the the rest there and 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 and. So if Alice prepares uh, a state uh, 1, 0, 0 without constant generality, on Bob's side, there can be, this can neither be true nor, nor false classically. So you say now, well, this is guaranteed, quantum certified, it says, you know, to be truly random according uh, to value definitions. You know, it's not only certified by complementarity, you may think this is not enough because according uh, to what I have told you, you must believe me, there exist complementary things which are still value definite. But this is this is it, you know. I mentioned the quantum observables where, where you have total value definiteness. And then you go like the Swiss company did um, to the uh, to the to the National Bureau of Standards and do, they do die-hard tests and say, yes, of course. This is truly random. Yeah? And then, then, then you give it to the public. Then you sell it for $2,000. Um, OK, so, um, so the strategy is quite, uh, quite easy to find value in definiteness. And this is the strategy of the proof of, the, of, the, of, of, uh, of our paper. And uh, in some sense, also with other uh, stronger uh, assumptions of uh, of me existence of measure, what Budovsky did a long time ago, um, uh, saying that you you find a a true implies false logic, you find uh, uh, which which has one uh, which has two endpoints, the initial point and the terminal point. You find the true implies two. You combine those together. And, and you get value indefiniteness. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these are just uh, references to the Pitovsky papers and to our papers. Uh, and this is a little bit, uh, not, I hope, not revisionist, the revisionistic history of true implies true and true implies false. You know, because people have been doing and arguing that for ages. Now, for instance, two implies uh, false is already uh, 83. Specker uh, not arguing two implies false. Uh, they, they had this two years before their, their famous paper. You know? Or two implies true uh, extended Specker back logic. Clifton had that, Belinfante uh, in 73. Pitovsky in 82, Hardy in 92, Capello and I in 95. Capello was very uh, instrumental in, in, in figuring out the Hardy case. He, he really interpreted Hardy so that one could read Hardy in terms of kids. Um, yeah. There, and there's this uh, non separability which was in the coaching Baker paper. This is still to be done, Professor uh, Patillo is coming to Vienna now and we will do the, the job for, for, for minimal configurations, I hope so. Um, and uh, yeah, this may be definitely goes here. With other strong, uh, weaker assumptions, we proved that. Because we allowed still for partiality. And uh, this is a partiality is a notion nobody is interested in physics. Uh, because it's uh, it's 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 uh, functional definiteness is a feature of uh, functions. You know, you, you put in an argument, you get out a result. This is, but the computer scientists they they have created Klinin. Klinin was the first postulating pars partiality. You plug in something and you don't know whether you get it out or not because of basically uh, uh, reduction to the Turing, uh, to, uh, to Turing undecidability. Uh, so there exist um, computation times uh, longer than the busy people function. Uh, uh, some, 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 
some reference, and uh, even though you mentioned the busy pivot function. This, this grows, the busy pivot function of n uh, grows stronger than all the computable functions of n, like the Ackermann function. I mean, you can, it's an interesting question, uh, uh, how, how strong, I give you n, how, how, how strong can you, can you give me a function which grows with n? You know? uh, it's a funny, and, and the busy PIVA is much stronger than every, because the Ackermann is still recursive. But it's total. Uh, the, the, yeah. Okay, uh, so the question may be, do these cloud exist, you know? Because, yeah, do, do these cloud exist? Because we, we can only uh, measure or prepare the state in the single uh, context. And we can only measure in another context. Uh, this is the best you can do, or you can you can do explosion type experiments with EPR, but um, uh, with three, it's, it's impossible already. I consider this at, at some point uh, three and more explosion fuel type con configurations. And um, uh, so I I am more or less now convinced, but I at the at the final. Uh, I, I, can, I can use because I, I'm already, I'm all, uh, unfortunately so old that I will retire soon, that I will have to retire soon, uh, that, uh, that I can say I have my doubts that all this, uh, this business is really not scholastic in a not so uh, um, favorable thing, you know? Because <coughs> if one insists on operationalization, these clouds are just idealistic. And, of course, one can say, well, do there exist clouds with other, with, in other configurations? And, and, and this is something I, I challenge you to look at. Uh, if you, if you, there are two messages which I would like to take home, uh, you, you should take home from this lecture. First of all, that there exists totally value-definite uh, models, which which, uh, which are not uh, total, totally value definite, which, which perform, uh, which, which are, um, uh, which show complementarity. And an entire branch in computer science uh, was created uh, because somebody, that is Edward Moore, tried to figure out whether you can do an autom automaton deterministic model of complementarity. You know? And, and, uh, and the, the computer scientists don't know this, they know more automata and mini machines, they know those are equivalent, but they don't know that this originated uh, by the quantum quest. Um, and and for, by, by the way, Greg Chapin, uh, his first work was on state identification program, uh, which was uh, a lot of his music. And, and right, this was the big hope. Uh, of uh, quantum logic, he is now a practicing psycholo psychologist in Arizona and uh, uh, living there happily. Um, uh, he, he suggested another, um, uh, another model that's this generalized Ulm model where you have uh, black balls and you have colors of different colors, the symbols in different colors, and you have to put on eye glasses in these colors. If you only look at the symbol in the color, and the other one meshes with the black background, basically. This is how, how he mimics uh, complementarity. You know, I cannot show this to you to the extent. That, but you can do all kinds of things. I mean, uh, 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 other Campello is very fond of pen, pentag pentagons, you know. Here I gave you a pentagon, uh, and we have explicitly constructed that in the floors. It's, it's systematic. You, you just derive all two valued measures, and, um, and, and and then you can label things. So this is the way how to construct what I call partition logics. Because partition logics, you have a set, you partition, and you consider uh, a certain collection of partitions of that set. And if you do that, you end up with generalized Bloom models or, um, or, or state identification uh, 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 logics correspond to state identification. Uh, problems according to Edward Moore. Uh, recently, uh, not, not recently because these papers are very old, 
uh, recently I discovered, let's say, let me be personal, recently I discovered that the graph theorists have done many things long time ago, and I'm, uh, I'm glad that, that Adam told me that. Um, um, so, uh, because he's uh, working always with the graph theorists. So this is very profitable. Very profitable. Uh, uh, I found out. Uh, so, so uh, they, they considered arbitrary diagrams and asked themselves, well, do these diagrams have an orthogonal, a faithful orthogonal representation such that the connection, if the adjacent vertices, they are orthogonal. They actually consider the inverse problem, are not orthogonal. But uh, this is just an uh, inverse way. So this is uh, the Robert Sachs Schrieffer paper, and they, they invented then several uh, uh, measures of that. And one is the classical measure, and, one, and the other one is the quantum rule, and this is what they call theta body. This is also old. So they, they developed that in an entirely different context. And now I'm just going, this is the last slide, and uh, I'm just saying thank you for the attention afterwards. Uh, the last slide just, just gives you two examples of um, exotic measures, which are neither quantum mechanical nor probably nor uh, classical. Because the big issue is, uh, this is the second message I, I, I want. So the first message is, there can be non classical models feature and complementarity which are valuable. So you have to be careful. And the second message is the question, the, the real question out there is I give you a certain uh, structure of observers. Uh, what kind of probability measures uh, can be uh, found on, uh, can be based on this structure such that within the context everything is classical very much in, in the spirit of your approach and in reason and but but uh, they are they are not classic yeah and, and one of the examples Gleason gave was uh, with uh, let, let's say he has a vector here and, and classically means that they sum up to one so if this is a unit vector he, he just considers the, the squares of the of the of, of the projection the orthogonal projections, and that's basically uh, the Gleason theorem for uh, at least sufficient, not necessary, yeah, for, for, uh, for vectors. But the question is, are there other things out there? And, and one of the things out there for the Pentagon, for instance, and this was right again. Ah, sorry, this is a kind of course, the house diagram is that uh, you have one half of, of all, all edges. And it's quite easy to see one half. So this is this isn't, this isn't real. This is difficult, more difficult to see that this has no quantum predictive correspondence. I, can, I cannot give you any faithful orthogonal representation in terms of three dimensions showing this. But it is also not guessing, not not guessing. And the guessing part is easy to prove. The guessing part is easy to prove. So this. It's a, it's, a, it's a viable, it's a dispersiveless uh, uh, state of this pentagon. Yushko has mentioned this. Yushko actually believes that he has reinvented that, but that was his, his, uh, his uh, two million measures long ago by Wright. Uh, already mentioned at least. Um, there exist 11 uh, two million measures, but none of them is like this. And the other one is um, a paper by Godzilla Sachs, which created an outburst of anger in Speka. Speka called me up and said, you have to write a paper against uh, this nihilistic paper. Nullification of the coach Speka theory. You know, how can you nullify a valid uh, mathematical theory? It's, already the title, you know? But it was a Swiss referendum. And, and this paper basically just just as a translation of a result by Gottsin and Sachs, who was recently put on the archive, they didn't publish it, uh, 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 who, who had a discontinuous measure such that 
uh, and uh, a, a drip bolt, we are talking about in 3D space, you know, talking about drip bolt, uh, could, could be three pilot if uh, the, um, the, the, the points, you know, the points on the, on the sphere have rational coordinates, have rational coordinates. Yeah? So, uh, for instance, zero, uh, one over square root of two, one over square root of two would qualify because one over square root of two is irrational. Just irrational. And the rational coefficients, of course, there's always, they are dense. There's always something in between. And look, it, this measure is really weird because, because uh, there's, there, there is, there is a, any color in between two colors. So it's, it's extremely discontinuous. We looked into that. And, 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 and do you know why in this case uh, the cautious specter theorem cannot be derived? Because the cautious specter theorem works with irrational angles. So, so, if you, so, so everything breaks up. It's like in the 2D case, uh, you have still a dense set, which is uh, because you don't have the, the full continuous uh, spectrum of observables, let's say, um, or possibilities of, of observables. If everything breaks down uh, and uh, you cannot derive uh, um, uh, becker type theories, period. You know, this can be generalized and so on and so forth. But the problem is that the predictions according to this model, according to this probabilistic model, are all discontinuous. So, so you shift uh, your measurement apparatus a little bit and out comes an entirely different probability. This, in my opinion, totally unfeasible. And, and we argued this, and, and uh, there's a funny twist to that. Uh, we, we got a referee report, and this was coordinated with Becker, you know. There was a referee report coming back and saying, this is a perverse paper, they haven't understood the coach Becker theory. So it's funny, uh, according to the referee, uh, Becker did not understand this of his theory. So, um, with this, I uh, will, yeah, and, 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 and so, so Maya did just one thing. Dotson and Sachs had it uh, three coloring. He identified two colors. They, yeah? And, and once you identify uh, two colors, you just get, uh, uh, and the two colors are, are zero. Yeah? So you get one, one, and two zeros. You cannot. Uh, the, 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 the irrational quantums with the full continuous sphere is four color. They show this also in this paper. And, and there the problem arises that if you identify three colors, it may happen that, and it happens that at some point, uh, the three zeros appear. This is not the right to make it the Okay, so thank you for Thank you, Carl, for your talk and uh, complement of the course for, for me at least, for those that attended. So, it's, um, there is a space for a couple of questions. I know it's, uh, it's, time, it's, it's time. So, um, just uh, I have a, li a little question. But it's just a comment I want you to, to, to elaborate on. Because this, the last thing you say about the, the nullification of the common spin theorem. Ah, two comments, I remember the second. Uh, the set, this thing about the common spin theorem, that they, they use a dense set, rationals, a dense set is continuous. So using uh, measure theoretical um, demons, let's say, posts or you know, bad beasts. Um, this was noticed by Putov. He, he called that mathematical politics. So you can you can destroy theories or, or make out of classical things or some quantum things, but if you if you impose not the beautiful and continuous structure of the reals, but so please uh, you know, to that. And the second one, it's uh, who is KS? Corn Specker or Carl Spossing? So then you are from 1967 publishing papers. Because you put that oh, sort of slide. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is a joke. No, is it's a joke. I said, I was wondering, he's no. about to retire and he already has a paper in 1960. No, it doesn't make sense. So, it's a funny thing. No, uh, I, I have to look at the post paper. I, 
I, I thought I had looked into all those two cases, uh, but I have no confusion. Yes. I have to look into that. I only know that Kutowski started with a, with a brave idea. I mean, it was an extremely uh, uh, original mind and fun to talk to and a nice person also. Uh, and it's really a pity that uh, they come from, so just like this, that, that he lost him, you know. But, uh, but um, uh, he had this idea to use, can you imagine that, to use uh, paradoxically set the compositions for quantum mechanics. You know, this was, uh, he started out with the story. So, so I, have a, I, I once had a paper a long time ago where I said, set theory and physics, and where I had this idea to have a global principle. No. Everything is allowed, which is not explicitly for me. And uh, there's this logo principle, you know, the name of Franklin was excellent choice. Nowadays, uh, they, they tell you everything is forbidden, which is not explicitly allowed. Yeah. So it, it was, it obviously was, uh, was into the logo thing. You know? uh, because he, he, he kind of thought that you can have uh, a probability theory and quantum state evolution and have uh, as a reason why it was accepted, which is a wide option. Yes. But it's exotic. So I will close with this remark that it's very, very interesting to, to think of classical quantum theory or, or just like physical theories and their logic and the relation with, uh, with mathematics. We're looking from the lens of, like the other thing, the fractal and gravity or like all these ideas that use really weird mathematical structures as basic um, basic building blocks. I think, I think why not? May I just uh, accompany your other conversation by quoting Hitler uh, in German. Niemand wird uns aus dem Himmel vertreten, den Kater uns zu schaffen. No, nobody will expel us from the heaven, Kater created. And at that time, of course, both Kater and Hitler were very aware of the Antinomy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, I think that I like that Okay, so thank you, Carl. And thanks. So we will have a little celebration ceremony now. So it's uh, please the uh, drinks are ready to be served, and I will give the presents to the speakers. We will give the remaining certificates and arrange the remaining payments. So. Thank you everyone for coming. This is the closing last thing. We are on streaming for the world. Thousands and thousands of people are watching us at the moment. <laughs> Not really, but we will. Um, and let's hope this is the occasion for, this is one more step towards uh, future developments and, collab and collaborative efforts to educate and uh, also create new interesting knowledge. So, thank you very much. This is the end of the conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. cash? For, for this? No, no. So, beer? No, no, it's covered. It's covered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I look on the budget. It's, it's